Now, let me ask you this, guys. When you saw those eight signals, what was your reaction? Did you get chills? So I was the first one to, to look at the data. So I was the first one to, to see these signals, and I, I, I pointed them out to Cherry shortly after. So when I first saw them, it was like, I think I was in the middle of driving back from Vancouver to like Toronto. And so it was like, I was like in some motel and on the, on the four day drive back, I was just looking at this. And when I first saw it, I was like, this looks way too good. <laughs> this is, this has to be just fake, right? Or just not, not real. So like, I kind of ignored it. When I came back to Toronto to finish up that summer project, which was this work, compiling into something presentable, it kept looking so convincing as to what an ideal candidate I simulated would look like. So I don't, I don't think I can show a picture of this, but if I were to look at a perfect signal that I manually injected into the data versus a signal that I found, which is one of our top eight candidates, they look v- relatively similar, like very convincingly similar. And so I it, like as any scientist, when you first look at these first pot, like good detections or f- good results, your first hunch is total skepticism, right? Is like, this is not real at all because that entire summer, I just been looking at pure junk for like, as in like interference for like a straight month and a half. And to suddenly see something that actually looks convincing was was kind of disbelieving. I was in kind of bit a, a kind of bit of a disbelief as to what these signals actually were. I definitely thought it was super exciting when Peter showed me these signals. I mean, thanks to his hard work coming up with the algorithm, uh, the whole analysis, and we actually did, did, did we actually did detect what we set out to detect. Although I am cautious that to that I, I, I would still say there's a good chance these eight signals that we detected are still interference. We we haven't been able to prove one way or the other, but I'm really impressed by how well the machine learning algorithm was able to detect these signals that fit exactly what we um, told them to look out, to, to, yeah, told them to look for. Now, what's the future? Are you guys just throwing the paper out there and saying here here it is everybody look or are you going to do as best and as you can to try to find even more signals especially in the breakthrough listen data right so at least for me this is really just the beginning this was like i said this was work done in 2021 And so since then a lot of development of new algorithms in the field of machine learning has popped up to for other fields of science to start exploiting for different kinds of problems and so the goal is to keep up with the pace of other fields such as machine learning and deep learning and to apply them into our kinds of problems and see if we can move this field even faster and so at least my personal work i'm trying to adapt this to like i said different setups of different telescopes and to generalize this beyond just gbt or the green bank telescope in the data that we have there and to extend its search capabilities in, in the future with with the help of deep learning doctor what's next for you well like peter said we're working on extending this algorithm to other telescopes it would really be nice if we can search for eti signals with every radio telescopes we can get our hands on. At the same time, I think Peter's work, this this research article is really an inspiration for other researchers. And a lot of people nowadays are interested in machine learning algorithms. The Bricklism data set is um, entirely public. So it is possible that other people who might have different ideas of how to search this data set could also have a go at it. Now, my final question is for both of you, and it's very simple. Do you think we're close? I mean, do you think within the next 20 years, we really stand a good chance of detecting a techno signature and thus proving that we are not alone? Or would you take a more pessimistic view and say, could take 100 years? Dr. Ng, you first. (laughs) I am... uh... A conservative type person, I think. Uh, I think will take us more than twenty years. But if we don't start, we'll never get there. This is why we're doing what we're doing. 
You don't find anything if you don't look. Yeah. Peter, your views on this. So, like I said, like I, well, like what I believe in, first of all, is like with all these science goals that you can't really put a timeline on this kind of things. Half of it requires luck and the other half, which you can't control, and the other half is acro science, which you can. And so in terms of the science, in terms of getting us closer to that, we've never been closer. And the idea of whether or not there is actually anything out there is, to me, seems very naive to accept the status quo, which is that we are actually alone. And I think the more we look out and study the universe, the more we realize that our situation is remarkably unremarkable in terms of being a Earth-like planet with possible liquid water or being some stable star. We realize that our situation isn't actually that unique. And so... As some people might say that we're very conservative of whether or not there might be life out there, I think that we haven't looked enough. And the coming few decades in terms of radio study and in terms of study in general is very, very exciting in terms of new technology, new hardware, and new algorithms such as the one proposed in our paper. And so in general... I'm rather, I I wouldn't put a timeline on it, per se, let's say 20 years or anything, because I have absolutely no clue how how that might play out, because half of it requires luck, is that I'm very hopeful about the field moving forward into the coming new age, yeah. Now, one last thing, and I want to point out that you said something very poetic. (laughs) We've never been closer. And if anybody ever says anything, why hasn't SETI found a signal or anything like that? You can always say, we've never been closer. Now, my last question is this. So out of 810 signal, you know, 810 candidates, you find eight signals. That's a lot. So doesn't that seem to bode well for searching other data sets in general and adapting the algorithm in that we might actually have a whole ton of signals, you know, (laughs) as we progress through this, right? So in terms of the data, like you said, there is quite a lot that we found that were rather convincing looking. And so it does prompt us to search other data sets as well, because eight is quite a lot out of, that's like one out of hundred stars that we look at. Now, the issue is that like we all need to verify these signals, right? So with previous detections like the BLC1, which was shown to be not a techno signature, and it has fooled our, basically fooled our pipeline in some regard, we had to check that, develop a manual way of verifying if the signal is RFI interference or if it's actually a signal of interest. So these eight signals, although they look convincing, we need to develop an automated pipeline to perform these searches or perform these verifications after we do these searches. And so, yeah, we can probably find more signals that can fit these templates and what these look like. They can look very similar and we can find them again, probably. But looking just for these lookalikes is not enough. We need to do some kind of back search in a sense that we search through. After we get a candidate, we search back into our data, see if we can find any other kinds of signals that look similar to that. And so... That is kind of my my take on that. Yes, we should be searching more, but we should also be searching in a smarter way, in a way that, you know, produces more interesting science in these detections that we make. All right. That's uh, thank you both for joining us today. And I look forward to future work. This is interesting. Sharpening the pencil as far as SETI searches. Great for having us on. Thank you. Thank you. 